Come in. Hello. Um, I'm Bill. I'm here to do the clone shoots. Oh, yes, yes. Come in. Come in. Have a seat. Thanks. Um, thanks. Yeah. Oh, now that is good. Now that is very thanks. good. You look just like me. Yeah. I see you're going with the old two people on a sofa scenario. Yeah, well, it seems pretty standard for sort of um, clone tutorials, doesn't it? So we thought we'd just run with it, basically. Right. Well, do we have a script? Not as such. Okay. It's basically just you and I smiling and waving at the camera together. Right. Well, should we do it now? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> that is very good. Ninja. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Media Channel. I'm your host, William Hugh. No, really, I am. You know, I get an awful lot of messages from people asking me to show them how to do cloning in Windows Movie Maker. But I tell them, you can't do this in Windows Movie Maker. It takes a more sophisticated program, something like, for example, Sony Vegas Pro. Okay, then they said, show us how to do it in Sony Vegas Pro. Fair enough. Here it is. First, film your sequence. Now, it's very important that your camera doesn't move at all during the filming. So lock it down firmly on a tripod or use a beanbag or some other support to ensure it remains steady throughout the take. Film both sides of the scene in one take without touching the camera. First, do one side of the scene, oh, yes. Come ensuring in. you leave suitable pauses in the conversation yeah. to allow for the other clone's responses. Oh, now that is then cross over and do the other side. Leaving the camera running like this ensures that it does not move at all between each side of the scene, and the actor's crossover is easily cut out during the edit. Okay, now that you've got the scenes in the can, upload them to your computer and let's do some editing. Open Sony Vegas Pro and simply drag and drop your downloaded clip onto the video timeline to open it. And here it is. As we can see, at the beginning of the clip, the actor is on the right-hand side of the sofa. And near the end, the actor is on the left-hand side. So first we need to cut the clip into two. So let's just run it to find the end of the right-hand side performance. That is very good. And there it is. Now we can split the clip at the cursor by simply pressing S on the keyboard. We now effectively have two clips. The right hand side and the left hand side. In order to produce the clone effect, we will need to stack these two clips one above the other on the timeline. Now to do this, we're going to need another video and audio track. To get them, we just click on Insert and choose Video Track and it magically appears. Now just click insert again and this time choose audio track. And there it is. By default, Sony Vegas Pro puts the new video track on top of the pile and the audio track on the bottom of the pile. Now to save confusion, I would like to have the new audio and video tracks together like the original tracks are. So I simply grab the new video track with my mouse, drag it down and park it above the new audio track like this. That's better. Now I'm able to grab the second clip and pull it down to the new tracks like this. So now we have both clips stacked on the timeline. And I'll just zoom up the timeline a bit so you can see this better. And you'll notice that only the top clip can be seen on the monitor. This is because Sony Vegas Pro acts as though it is looking down the cursor line at the stack of clips. And the top clip obviously obscures those below. If I now move the top clip out of the way of the cursor line, it's able to see the clip below. So in order to show both sides of the sofa at the same time, we will need to sort of cut a hole in the top clip through which we can see the bottom clip. Now, luckily, this is not a difficult thing to do. And this is how we go about it. Click on the Event Pan Crop tool on the top clip here, and you'll see it opens like this. Now, first, make sure that the Sync Cursor button is selected because this ensures that the cursor in the Event Pan Crop tool is synchronized with the cursor on the timeline here. Now make sure the cursor is at the beginning of the track here.
because we need the effect to begin at the very beginning of the clip. In order to produce our hole in the clip, we'll need to make a mask, which will, as the name suggests, mask certain areas of the clip, allowing lower areas to show through. Now all of the Vegas Pro series of editors have a masking tool, which you can turn on by clicking the mask box here. And again, just click the mask timeline here to make sure it starts from the beginning of the clip. If we now look at the toolbox that has opened up here, we can see two pen nib icons. The one we need at the moment is the top one, known as the anchor creation tool, which will allow us to define our mask. So just click on it, and then use it to create a box that will effectively cut the screen in half, by clicking on a few points like this. It doesn't have to be particularly tidy. And finish by clicking on the first point again, and the mask is instantly created. As you can see, we should have clicked around the opposite side of the screen, because the mask is actually covering up the actor we want to see, and it's showing the empty side of the sofa. But this is easily remedied by going back to the tools and changing the mode from positive to negative, which reverses the mask, placing the hole on the empty side of the sofa and allowing us to see the actor on the right. So, let's get rid of this and look at the result. I'll just move the cursor to where the left hand actor appears, and there he is. We can see him through the whole effect that we've created in the top clip. Pretty standard for sort of um, I see you're going with the old stuff. Unfortunately, the edge of the hole is a bit obvious due to slight lighting changes during the filming, and it can be seen as a hard edge here. So we need to find a less noticeable way to blend the two clips together. So once again click on the Event Pan Crop tool on the top clip, and look in the masking tools for a tool called Feather Type. This will allow us to feather or blend the edges of the mask to make it less obvious. If we click on the tool, we see that it offers three types of blend. In, which will blend in from the edge, out, which blends out from the edge, and both, which blends both in and out at the same time. Now we need all the blend we can get. So we'll choose both. Now nothing will actually happen until we tell it how much blend we want, by clicking on the Feather Percent tool here. We'll need quite a lot, so I'm going to push it up to the 30% or so mark. If we now check the monitor, we can see that the blending has done a great job in hiding the hard edge. Now if we play the edit and listen to it, we can see that the conversation is completely out of sync. People want to with it, basically. But this can easily be adjusted by moving one clip in relation to the other on the timeline. For example, the right hand actor here signs off with the words, yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Which is this bit here. But before that, the left hand actor should say, shall we do it now? Shall we do it now? Which is this bit here. So in order to synchronise the conversation, we need to place the question before the answer, like this. Should we do it now? Yeah, why not? And there you go, all nicely in sync. <laughs> that is very good. Now once you have synchronised your clips, it only remains to trim them up, by dragging the clip edges like this. Now when you're happy with the finished edit, select the bit of the clip you want to render by clicking and dragging your mouse along the top of the timelines like this, and a blue line will appear showing you the area of your selection. OK, now let's go to File, and click Render As. Now I'm going to save the video as a WMV file, a Windows Media Video file, and I'm going to choose a high definition 720p video at 4.8 megabits per second. Finally, make sure that the Render Loop Region Only box is checked here, and that will render just the bit of the clip we defined with the blue line, as opposed to the whole timeline being rendered. Now we just click Save, let it render, and this is what we get. Um, thanks. Yeah. Oh, now that is good. Now that is very thanks. good. You look just like me. Yeah. I see you're going with the old two people on a sofa scenario. Yeah, well, it seems pretty standard for sort of um, clone tutorials, doesn't it? So we thought we'd just run with it, basically. Right. Well, do we have a script? Not as such. Okay. It's basically just you and I smiling and waving at the camera together. Right. Well, should we do it now? Yeah. Why not? 
That is very good. So there you go, that is how you do it. That is how you make clones using Sony Vegas Pro. So you see, it wasn't my evil twin at all. It was just a fake. Wasn't it evil twin? Yes, Will. Say goodbye to the viewers. Goodbye to the viewers. And I'll see you next time on, on the, the Media, Media Channel. Channel. Yeah.